Greetings everyone, this is Butterworx speaking. In today's video, we are going to be talk talking about my top 10 favourite pole arms. You do realise that I've actually already done a video on this, so do you need any help at Battlerex? No, I do not need help. A bit rude, but okay. <sighs> Why do bosses always annoy you just as you're about to get into the video? So, towards that point, on to the video. In 10th place is the Sword Staff. The Sword Staff is a combination of a sword and a quarter staff. Which, this weapon was very common by the Swedish Empire, but it was only used by the Swedish Empire. That's why it's not so high on this list, it's because as it wasn't that prevalent in history. Similar to 10th place is, in 9th place, the Naginata. This pole arm was used by the Japanese, used to actually have as home guard a, a defense, which was very common around and with Japanese women, and however, that this isn't as effective because of the impurities in the blade. Although not a battlefield pole arm, the, the eighth place position goes to the quarter staff. This was very common in duels and survival, but especially with the Scottish Highlanders, as he used to use it to make sure of their ground. And however, but this isn't as effective if, as a weapon because as of, of the fact that it's wood and and denying won't always be efficient. In seventh place is the pike. This weapon was a variant of the spear, which was from three to six meters long. These weapons and and were very effective in charges. It is known as shotguns. However, using them like a spear isn't very effective as they would be quite a clumsy weapon in this situation. In sixth place, we have the Danax. This weapon was very common with the Vikings, who didn't use shield, but yet a lot of them did use shield, was in which this weapon was very effective for causing some damage to the chainmail armors of its time, but not as efficient as the ones higher up on this list. Talking about ones higher up on this list, in fifth place is the spear. This weapon was used by many civilizations over the years, yes, and, and it's extremely effective with thrusting. And however, that some of the others on this, year, on this list was actually a lot more specialized in in their capacity to do more damage. In fourth place is the bill hook, specifically the Roncon, which is the Italian bill hook. This weapon and was is very effective at, at hooking the opponents, and some which could lead to disarmament, and however not entirely as efficient as others, as on this list and other Moving on. In third place is the pole axe. This weapon and was is, is very effective in in the medieval era as it has an axe head, a spearhead, and a hammerhead. It, however, it's not the most efficient in hooking capacities. Only slightly differing from third place. Is with instead of a hammerhead at the back, it's a, another spike at the back. In second place is the halberd. That this weapon is highly effective for for thrusts and parries and somewhat with hooking in capacity, but not entirely that easy to identify just by length. Still a really cool weapon though. Before I announce first place, I would like to give an honourable mention to the lance. The lance is is a pole lance specifically for the cavalry use because it's designed to actually maximise 
is the velocity on of cavalry on horse. And so, so it's highly effective in cavalry charges. However, if you're being used in an infantry turn, um, it's not very effective. But it's still incredibly amazing and, and to look at. But it's actually the lance that inspires a lot of spear design, as we see in fiction. And now for the victor, the first place, which is Beck de Corbin. This weapon and it is somewhat a hybrid of poleaxe and the halberd, but without the axe head. And this one has practically spike all around and just plain deadly. And that's my a top 10 pole arms. I hope you have enjoyed it. Please, please press the like button and the subscribe button. And I, I wish to encounter you again.